Many years ago, I saw a cartoon, and there was uh, someone, the speaker, in front of a crowd, and said, "Who wants change?" And everybody said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And who want to implement that change and live through that change? And then people were. Some people, and I would say a significant number of people, do not like change. And it's particularly true for institutions like our churches. Uh, when the new translation of the, ba the Bible is released, some people said, well, what's wrong with the King James Bible? And I like that. Or a new hymn book will be released that, well, they did not include on word Christian soldier. Or... Uh, inclusive language said what's wrong with that there's there's it's not that people don't like necessarily what is offered is there a lot of people do not like change and in the 31st chapter of the book of Jeremiah the prophet come and says the times is surely coming that says the Lord when God will make a new covenant with the house of Judah in, in, in uh, Judea. And I can't imagine the people said, well, what's wrong with the covenant we had? Why do we need this new covenant? You know, we had a good covenant. Okay, maybe the kings and the ruling class have broken that covenant. Okay, maybe the priest and the religious authority. Okay, I will give it to you. Almost everyone has broken that covenant, but it's no reason to have a new covenant. Well, when the prophets speak, the Israelites are in exile. They have placed in the past all their hope in this God that will protect them, and they have lost. And they're exiled in distant land, and many of them were simply ready to give up. And then this Jeremiah come and start to speak in the name of God of a new covenant. And people said, okay, what are what is the less? What should we learn by heart? And then this prophet said, no, 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 no. It's not a long list of rules or regulation. It's not what you know. It's how you behave. It is how you are. It will not be written in stone like the covenant of old. It will be written in your heart. And this is a profound change, a profound transformation for the people because it's not about instruction. It's not about learning the right answer. It's not about um, having some sort of authority telling you what to do, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, because they have this selected and special knowledge they have learned and studied. No, it's about understanding God's plan, God's will for human, humankind, and living those core principles. It's moving from a God explained by from a clergy to a God accessible to all moving to from sorry moving from a God that is accessible in very specific place very specific building very specific time Sunday morning between 10 and 11 to a God that is who is accessible by all all the time all the places and this is a profound transformation it's not a covenant that is imposed by God. Like, I will make a covenant with you. And this is the condition. No, it's a covenant that comes from the inside. That is desire. It's not a covenant that gives boundary of all the things we should not do. It's a God that enter in covenant trusting that we know what is the right thing, what we know we should do. It's a profound transformation of, it's a profound shift in power in a way, this new covenant. It's not a series of gatekeeper of 
initiate that know everything and that looking for new convert and we will instruct them in faith as we often say in our churches these days it's trusting that God has placed this law, this, this value, this principle in the heart of the people, in the mind of the people, in the soul of the people, and maybe would help. They will do the right thing. They will. It's starting from a principle that human beings are essentially good and not that they are bad. And that gives us a lot of hope for all. We're not a bad person that need to be elevated, that need to be saved by God. All the ingredients are here, inside of us, around us, in our lives. And we have a God that, oh yes, wants to help us, wants to give us the tool. But trust that we will do the right thing. It's, it's a message of hope. It's a message, of, yeah, it's a message of hope for us today, for our church today. We don't have to save the world. We don't have to gain the world for God. We have to reach out and find where God is already there. Find communality, find partners, find ways to build bridges and see where we can work together. Well, that's all for today. I am Reverend Stefan Vermet. I remain the lectionary man. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.